brand new ties. Honduras breaks ties with Taiwan as it commences new diplomatic relations with China. Closer to war? Vladimir Putin's proposition to move Russia's nuclear weapons to Belarus faces criticism from NATO. What's his response? Find out tonight. Apocalyptic warnings. Donald Trump cast the 2024 elections in doomsday terms as rumors rise on his arrest. And cherry blooms. Washington's tidal basins goes pink as cherry blossom blooming season begins. is Adaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening to you from us at World News. We start the week off with a comprehensive coverage of key events from across the globe. Now, beginning with China and Honduras, starting formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan accusing Beijing of using coercion and intimidation to lure away its few remaining allies. It is a blow to Taipei, with yet another country breaking off ties. The Honduran Foreign Ministry says it now recognizes the People's Republic of China as the only legitimate government that represents all of China. Adding in its statement that Taiwan is an inseparable part of Chinese territory. The Taiwanese Foreign Ministry said the Honduran move was part of a series of China's coercions and intimidations. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Taiwan would like to warn Beijing that its attempts to lure our diplomatic allies with false promises in order to squeeze our diplomatic space has seriously harmed the feelings of the Taiwanese people and sped up the divergence of cross-strait relations. Taiwan accuses Honduras of demanding exorbitant sums of money before ending ties. The Honduran move followed negotiations with Beijing, including on building a hydroelectric dam. In Washington, the State Department said while Honduras's move was a sovereign decision, it's important to note China often makes promises in exchange for diplomatic recognition that ultimately remain unfulfilled. It's added, we strongly encourage all countries to expand engagement with Taiwan and to continue to stand on the side of democracy, good governance, transparency and adherence to the rule of law. The switch leaves Taiwan with just 13 countries that formally recognize it over China, having lost several Latin American allies in recent years. Now, meanwhile, Saudi Aramco signed an agreement with the Chinese partners for an oil refinery and petrochemical project in northeast China that is expected to start in 2026 to meet the country's growing demand for fuel and chemicals. The project in Liaoning province's city of Panjin will be Aramco's second major refining petrochemical investment in China and follows the world's top oil exporter reporting a record profit of $161 billion in 2022. Saudi state-owned Aramco said in a statement that joint venture Hua Jing Aramco Petrochemical Company will build and operate the complex that will house a 300,000 barrel per day oil refinery and a cracker with annual production capacity of 1.65 million tons of ethylene and 2 million tons of paraxylene. Construction at the complex will start in the second quarter after the project secures the required administrative approvals. The plant is expected to be fully operational by 2026 and Aramco will supply up to 210,000 BPD of crude oil as feedstock for the plant. State-owned Norinco Group, a Chinese military equipment maker, owns 51% of Hapco while Aramco and Pangjin Xingsheng hold stakes of 30% and 19% respectively. Separately, Aramco signed a memorandum of understanding with the southern Chinese province of Guangdong to explore cooperation in sectors including energy, finance, research and innovations, according to a post on the provincial government's website. Over on updates of Myanmar's military coup, the country's ruling military paraded an arsenal of weapons in the capital. In a grand display of force days after the United States imposes fresh sanctions against the junta for inflicting pain and suffering on the people of Burma. The array of equipment ranging from rocket launchers to tanks was deployed alongside hundreds of marching troops to mark the country's annual Armed Forces Day. Myanmar's military has ruled the impoverished Southeast Asian nation with an iron fist for most of the past six decades, apart from a brief 10-year flirtation 
with a quasi-democracy that came crashing down in 2021 when the general seed power once more. Monday's parade was the third time the military, known as the Tatmandor, was marked Armed Forces Day since overthrowing the democratically elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi, who was since then sentenced to 33 years in prison during secretive trials that her lawyers say are politically motivated. Speaking to the crowd during the parade, the junta leader Ming Ang Lang said that Tatmandor will put in effort into achieving full law enforcement and tranquility across the union to ensure the socio-economic security of all citizens. In a report by the global New Light of Myanmar, long considered the mouthpiece for whoever is running the country, Armed Forces Day will safeguard the nation's interest of the state lives and property of people and to put a strenuous effort in respect corners in times of natural disasters. It also added that the objective of the day is to provide the necessary assistance by Tatmandor for holding a free and fair multi-party democratic general election. Fresh updates have arrived on the Ukraine-Russia conflict as NATO slammed Vladimir Putin for dangerous nuclear rhetoric after the Russian president announced plans to station tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, while his forces stepped up shelling of the frontline Ukrainian city of Advikka. Putin, in retaliation, said that the Western countries are seeking to put together new global alliances persistent of those forced by the Axis powers prior to the World War II. NATO on Sunday criticized Vladimir Putin for what it called his dangerous and irresponsible nuclear rhetoric. This comes after the Russian president said Saturday he would station tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, Ukraine's neighbor. Putin likened it to the U.S. stationing its weapons in Europe while insisting that Russia would not violate its nuclear non-proliferation promises. A NATO spokesperson said in emailed comment Sunday that Russia has consistently broken its arms control commitments. It's one of Russia's most pronounced nuclear signals since the beginning of its invasion of Ukraine 13 months ago. And Ukraine's foreign ministry on Sunday called for an extraordinary meeting of the UN Security Council and for the international community to take decisive measures to prevent Russia's use of nuclear weapons. Washington played down concerns. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. had seen no sign that Putin had moved any nuclear weapons. Uh, I can tell you that we've seen nothing that would indicate uh, Mr. Putin is uh, preparing to, to use tactical nuclear weapons in any way whatsoever in, in uh, Ukraine. And I can also tell you that we haven't seen anything that would cause us to change our own strategic nuclear deterrent posture. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ukrainian forces have managed to blunt Russia's offensive in and around the embattled eastern city of Bakhmut, the scene of brutal fighting in the last few months. Ukraine's general staff said on Sunday that Ukrainian forces had repelled 85 Russian attacks over the past 24 hours in several parts of the eastern front, including Bakhmut. Separately, Britain's defense ministry said the months-long Russian assault on the city had stalled, mainly as a result of heavy troop losses. Israeli President Isaac Herzog urged the government to halt its bitterly contested judicial overhaul a day after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sacked his defense minister for opposing the move, sparking massive street protests. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fired Defense Minister Yoav Gallant on Sunday after Gallant called for a halt to a controversial judicial reform plan. Gallant, a lawmaker from Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party, broke ranks on Saturday by publicly urging Netanyahu to suspend the legislation. He said, quote, the growing rift in our society is penetrating the Israel Defense Forces and security agencies. This poses a clear, immediate and tangible threat to the security of the state. I will not allow this. His dismissal marks the largest public fracture to date in Netanyahu's coalition government over the proposed reforms that have sparked mass protests and even dissent from some in the nation's revered military. Others in Netanyahu's party have begun to waver. A top lawmaker echoed the defense chief's call to pause the contested judicial overhaul on Sunday. Dissent from the premier's own party and cabinet has compounded months of unprecedented mass protests by Israelis who fear the package of reforms could endanger court independence. I'm fighting for the future of my country as I know it. I grew up in the Soviet Union 
I know exactly what it means to, to live in a dictatorship regime. Uh, I'll do everything in my power to prevent my country from becoming one. Netanyahu, who is on trial on graft charges that he denies, says the overhaul will balance out the branches of government, a key bill effectively giving his religious nationalist coalition more control over the appointment of judges is expected to be brought for ratification this week in the Knesset, where he and his allies wield 64 out of 120 seats. But how, or even if, that as yet unscheduled vote will proceed has been thrown into question by Likud dissenters. We're going into a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, Donald Trump used an election rally in Waco, Texas, to cast the 2024 presidential vote in apocalyptic terms and rail against prosecutors, pursuing him with criminal investigations he likened to a Stalinist Russia horror show. At a political rally over the weekend, former U.S. president and current Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump cast the 2024 election contest in dark and apocalyptic language. The only way to stop these arsonists is to rebuke and reject this evil persecution by sending us straight back to the White House to expel the communists and the Marxists and all of them. Trump spoke to a crowd of thousands in the city of Waco, Texas, on Saturday. The twice-impeached former president is currently facing a raft of state and federal investigations. He continued to claim without evidence that the probes were examples of political persecution by Democratic President Joe Biden's government. The Biden regime's weaponization of law enforcement against their political opponent is something straight out of the Stalinist Russian horror show. And he continued to falsely claim his 2020 election loss was due to fraud. Claims that fueled the violent attack on the U.S. Congress by his supporters on January 6, 2021. It's a rigged system. Like we had a rigged election, we have a rigged system. And he offered support and sympathy to those who were charged in the Capitol riot, who he described as likewise victims of persecution. Patriotic parents, Christians, conservatives, pro-life activists are being hounded by the FBI and the DOJ. Like terrorists, they're being treated so badly. The Capitol riot left five people dead. More than 100 police officers were injured as Trump supporters battered and bludgeoned their way inside Congress in an effort to stop lawmakers from certifying the election results. Trump has turned to increasingly incendiary language, warning of death and destruction amid reports a Manhattan prosecutor could be close to charging him over an alleged hush money payment to an adult film star. Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, says he paid $130,000 to the performer Stormy Daniels to buy her silence over what she says was a sexual affair with the Republican candidate. Cohen says he was reimbursed by Trump, who marked the hush money payment as legal fees. Legal experts say Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg may believe that falsified business record was an attempt to conceal a campaign law violation. Trump denies the affair, maintains his innocence, and says the probe is a partisan witch hunt. His supporters waved signs in agreement. His campaign has attempted to raise money off news of the pending indictment. Some supporters said Trump's arrest would strengthen their support for him, dismissed the allegations against him, and one seemed unfazed that the self-proclaimed conservative candidate might have paid off a porn star. A grand jury in New York could vote on criminal charges against Trump this week. Meanwhile, in Germany, airports and buses and train stations across Germany were at a standstill, causing disruption for millions at the start of a working week during one of the largest walkouts in decades as Europe's biggest economy reels from inflation. Two of Germany's largest airports, Munich and Frankfurt, suspended flights while long-distance rail services were cancelled by rail operator Deutsche Bahn. Striking workers wearing red high-visibility jackets blew horns and whistles through an empty Munich train station. Employees are pressing for higher wages to blunt the effects of inflation, which reached 9.3 percent in February. Germany, which was heavily dependent on Russia for gas before the war in Ukraine, has been particularly hard hit by high prices as it scrambled for new energy sources, with inflation rates exceeding the euro area average in recent months. Persistent cost pressure have pushed central banks to a series of interest rate increases, though policymakers have said it is too early to talk of price wage spiral. 
Verdi Union is negotiating on behalf of around 2.5 million employees in public sector, including a public transport and airports. While Railway and Transport Union EBG negotiates for around 230,000 employees at railway operator Deutsche Bahn and bus companies. In the hours running up to the strike, both sides dug in their heels with union bosses warning that considerable pay hikes were a matter of survival for thousands of workers. Verdi is demanding a 10.5% wage increase, which would see pay rising by at least 500 euros per month, while EBG is asking for a 12% raise or at least 650 euros per month. Stranded passengers express both sympathy and unhappiness about the strike action. Mississippi is in tatters following a deadly tornado that left nothing but disaster in its wake. Relief efforts are flooding with cautious optimism in the search for survivors. Disaster relief efforts are pouring into Mississippi and Alabama, grappling with the 170-mile trail of destruction there and tales of survival that defy the odds are emerging. It told everything. Johnny Carrother lives in Silver City, Mississippi, one of the string of towns hit by the rare and powerful tornado on Friday. At least two dozen people have been killed, hundreds of buildings leveled, 26,000 are without power, and weather forecasters say more severe weather, including the possibility of more tornadoes, may be coming. Spoke to Jarrett Brown, an Army veteran and now volunteer leader for a disaster response organization called Team Rubicon. He was in Selma, Alabama, helping recovery efforts and is now in Rolling Fork, believed to be the worst hit town. Many of the residents here are facing an uncertain future now. It has a population of 1,900 and according to census data, about a fifth are below the poverty line. It was 20 seconds, 18, 20 seconds. Um, one of the homeowners, you know, said they finally woke up and they looked up and they thought they were dead. And they looked up and they're like, well, I don't see the clouds of heaven. They're like, and then I looked down and I didn't see the fires of hell. So from right there, I knew I wasn't dead. Uh, but it's that quick. And then you look at the aftermath, you're like, there's no way that was 18 seconds. President Biden has approved a federal state of emergency declaration for Mississippi, which will provide additional funding and aid to supplement local efforts. We have some good news for you. Plastic bottles and discarded home appliances are being used to make smartphones and other new electronics. More companies in South Korea are increasing the use of recycled materials in their production processes as part of their commitment to making a more sustainable society. These recycled plastic water bottles have been cleaned and broken down into small pieces. A high temperature procedure first turns the pieces of plastic into thin fiber-like strings, then into even smaller grain-like particles. This material, created from melting plastic waste, has now become an essential part of making smartphones. Samsung Electronics has been increasing its use of recycled materials, like fishing nets and plastic bottles, for parts in their phone manufacturing process. For their latest smartphone, the Galaxy S23 Ultra model, up to 12 parts were made from recycling such plastic waste. Samsung Electronics say their goal is to make 100% of their plastic parts from recycled materials by the year 2050. Developing power saving for our products and maximizing resource recycling in the production process, our goal is to use innovative technology to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Other large companies are also making efforts towards actively utilizing recycled materials. LG Electronics offers a recycling program where they take back unwanted home appliances. This program makes it easier for LG branded appliance owners to discard large electronic appliances while allowing the company to extract and recycle reusable materials like plastic, copper, gold and silver. The amount of recycled plastic Hyundai Motor Group uses in manufacturing its Kia EV6, the eco-friendly electric model, comes to roughly 75 500 milliliter plastic bottles. In the production industry, tens of thousands of tons of recycled plastic are used in new products every year. As more companies look at sustainable management, the number of products using recycled material is increasing. But the problem is cost. This has brought up concerns over the high costs involved in the recycling process, eventually leading to higher product prices. 
These companies have said, though, that moving towards environmental protection and sustainable management is indeed the way forward and that efforts will be made so that these costs are not passed on to consumers. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Large hailstones and high winds pummeled the city of East Point in the United States, state of Georgia, adding to severe weather seen across the southeast of the country over the weekend. Video showed that hailstones around an inch across raining down in the town, which lies in the suburbs of Atlanta. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris arrived in Kotoka International Airport in Ghana, the first stop of three-nation tour of Africa. The visit is part of a diplomatic push by Biden administration to deepen ties with the continent amid competition from China and Russia. More than 100 migrants arrived at the southern Italian port of Bari aboard the Doctors Without Borders of Sergio Barons. Many sang songs and listened to music during navigation as they waited to reach a safe port in Italy. Thousands of Houthi supporters rallied in Yemen's capital Sana'a to mark the 8th anniversary of the Saudi-led military intervention in Yemen's conflict. Houthis celebrate March 26 every year as the nation's steadfastness day. MotoGP world champion Francesco Bagnaia of Ducati won the season opening Portuguese Grand Prix as pole sitter Marc Marquez crashes out early in the race. Bagnaia won MotoGP's first ever sprint and victory in the race, which the dominant after taking the lead earned him another 25 points and a big lead at the top of the standings. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And finally, tonight we end things off in Washington, D.C., where thousands of people gathered along the tidal basin to take in the sights of the city's famed cherry blossom trees in peak bloom. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.